Let's let the scripture tell us. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, him being Christ. In Christ was the fullness of the Godhead. And the scripture tells us you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities, in whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. That word, that statement means you just had a heart adjustment. You've had a heart transplant. Don't let anyone try to tell you any that it's, it's about the traditions that we carry on. Some people are enamored with tradition. I went to the University of San Diego for a bachelor's and, and a master's degree, and they were in love with their traditions. They wanted to point to the 2,000 years, and I don't like tradition, don't get me wrong. They wanted to point to the 2,000 years of Catholic heritage and try to connect us as if that was going to make me emotionally stable, as if that was going to do something for my spirit. God was in Christ, and the reason why God was in Christ was because someone needed to have some bloodshed. Something, the story needed to be complete. I mean, it's not just about tradition. I love tradition. Believe me, I, I like tradition. I like that I'm connected to something with longevity. But it's not the tradition that's saving us. It's the message that's saving us. It says that we have been circumcised in our heart. Amen. The circ putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Okay, now I'm talking about being in Christ. Now this is how I get in Christ. In verse 12, Colossians 2, 12 says this, Buried with Him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with Him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised Him, Him being Christ, from the dead. And you, us as humans, being dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, flesh has He quickened together or made alive having forgiven you of all your trespasses. Now, I have to get in Christ. Because when I'm in Christ, He elevates my living. He takes me into the heavenly realms. And so, ultimately, my perspective, my attitude, my behavior, my character is changed. God is trying to change or reverse your nature. Every single one of us is prone to a will in our lives that just wants to do whatever it wants to do. We and good and bad. The spectrum ranges. We want to do good and we want to do bad. The good part of me, listen to this, the good part of me wants to feed the homeless. But there's a part of me that wants people to know how much people I fed. The good part of me wants me to show that I actually give alms. But the bad part of me wants to bring this selfish nature in me and say, well, this is how much alms I'm giving. So there's this tussle in my spirit. Now, I just gave you two scenarios, both of them, one's good and one's directed towards me. All glory, the Bible says, is directed to God. All praise is to God. That's what Paul would tell us, that you have been saved unto good works, or the salvation has come into your life. And because I now have salvation, I know what peace and joy is, I can go and actually do good works. Right. So, do you see the little subtle change in and out of your head? You see the subtle change? One says, if I do this, get this point because it's major, it's where a lot of religion is. If I do this for God, Brother Danny, if I do these things, if I show up on a Wednesday and I let God know that I'm trying, he, He's going to love me. Amen. The other says, you know what? God loves you whether you're here on a Wednesday or not. Well, man, but don't be here, okay? Don't, don't leave. God loves you. It is grace. We read it in Ephesians chapter 2. It is grace that reached every single one of you. Every single one of us was lost. Let me, we've heard the statement, God was not lost. No one found Jesus. He was not lost. I'm here to tell you, He found us, yeah. and we weren't even looking for Him. And when did He find us? The scripture says, while you were yet in sin, Christ died for you. Now, I just got to figure out, then, to get in Christ, baptism gets me 
in Christ. Now, most people stop there. Most people say, well, I, I want to be baptized just so I could, you know, have my sins remitted. That's fantastic. That's great. But greater than that, God is trying to change your nature and take you from the door into the rooms that he has and all this beauty and wonder that we could never exhaust in God. I'm just not interested, although I am. I'm not just interested in having my sins removed. I'm interested in having God's love and partnering with Him to destroy the works of the devil. This is why, this is why 2 Corinthians, or excuse me, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, I think it's 2 Corinthians, but I think I just messed up with my notes here. Here's the scripture regardless. If any man be in Christ, everyone say in Christ, in Christ. he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. This is why Paul said there's no excuse anymore. You can't say, well, that's just the way my culture is. No. Oh, man. Okay, let's stay. Let's, let's just stay there for a minute. This is just the way I was brought up. This is just how we do it in my family. This is just the way I inherit it. It's in my DNA. Well, we talked about it on Sunday, and I'll hit it a little bit here this evening. When you have been buried with Christ in baptism, He reawakens your life. He reawakens your spirit. And all those old things are passed away. You're a new creature. I can't blame my writing on being Irish. I can't blame my stubbornness on being a macho Hispanic man. I can't do that. I'm a new creature. And a new creature behaves differently. He sees the world differently. Amen. Brother Jesper said amen. amen. I'm a new creature. It, but the key again is in Christ. Because when I'm in Christ, I'm now going to start walking or start to understand my purpose in life. One scripture, one more scripture here. It says, therefore we are buried within my baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father... Even so, we also shall walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of His death, we shall also in the likeness of His resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with Him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall no longer serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Let me tell you what you're looking at. You're looking at a dead man walking. Amen. This man, although he resurrects every now and then, is a dead man walking. I have been buried with Jesus Christ. He has changed my life. He's changed my character. I now have a new nature. And every day I live, I just have to make sure that I sacrifice that will. I nail it to the cross again and say, okay, God, you lead my life. Yeah. You Man. put me in my destiny. Now, listen, the natural question that you should ask is, what is the evidence of a new character? Okay, baptism does that, but what's the evidence of a new character? Here's evidence. I no longer think the way that I used to. There's something personal that no one else knows. I no longer Think the way I used to. This is why, and I don't know why I'm saying, but I'll say it. This is why you, we cannot baptize babies. There's no conscience to sin. Original sin is there. There's going to be a nature in them. If you let that baby grow up long enough, he's going to start biting and he's going to not want to share. There's something inherent in his nature. This is why you cannot baptize babies. Because it doesn't make sense with the biblical narrative. The biblical story. There has to be a consciousness. I need someone to rescue me from myself. I need to be buried. I need that nature to be buried. As a matter of fact, Hebrew Old Testament law. How many knows what a bar mitzvah is? How many have ever heard of a bat mitzvah? It's the female component. At the age of 12 years old, the Hebrew male and female were responsible for every part of the law. So obviously, God understood there are some development periods. But about 12 years old, this boy, this girl knows right from wrong. So they weren't ever expected or they weren't ever held accountable to the law. 
That's why baptism happens when a consciousness awakes in your life and says, Okay, I profess my faith in Jesus Christ as my only Savior. We're not pluralistic. We're Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. I've got to be buried in Him. And I've got to be buried in His name. The reason why... Let me read you 1 Corinthians 15, 55, verses 55. Not 55 verses, but verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. I mean, ultimately... Death has its way in every single one of us because of the curse that was placed in Adam. Every single one of us is going to find ourselves in the grave if God does not come. Because that ultimately is man's punishment. Right? It's what he has to look forward to. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. That's why in Acts chapter 2, in Acts chapter 4, in Acts chapter 9, in Acts chapter 19, everyone was baptized calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ has victory over death, hell, and the grave.